It's the weekend and time for your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, April 22. Government's transformation of the sugar industry, which involves the production of more value-added products, is moving full steam ahead. Word of this from Agriculture Minister Indar Ware, who today officially launched a new research facility, Harper Sugarcane Mill, which will complement the changes in the sector. The transition of the sector will see the industry producing reduced quantities of raw sugar to satisfy domestic needs, while targeting overseas markets with branded specialty sugars for direct consumption only. The local rum industry also stands to benefit from increased production of premium quality molasses. The process has already begun. However, it does not end here. We will be maximizing the full value chain associated with the sugarcane plant by manufacturing several byproducts, including fertilizers and certain household biodegradable items. All of this, we will also be telling the story of sugar and rum to the world, thereby reinforcing key linkages with our cultural and tourism sectors that we correctly pointed out at the time. The Harper Sugarcane Mill, a million dollar project, is dedicated to sugarcane and rum research. Master Blender and the owner of the West Indies Rum Distillery, Alessandra Gabriel, said research is key. The idea is to research. Remember, Andrew said knowledge is pleasure. We are products of pleasure. It's not about drinking to become stupid. It's drinking to share beautiful moments. That happens with beautiful rum. And because rum from come from king. And so we want to research with here the team and I really love what they're doing. What is the variety of the cane? How does that translate and what taste of the rum? So this is a research center. This is very Bayesian in the sense that that culture is alive and it's continuing on. The local car industry has not escaped fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. According to the regional product manager of the vehicle sales department at Courtesy Garage Limited, Samuel Gaston, the demand for new vehicles outweigh companies' ability to supply in light of a worldwide shortage in components required for assembling automobiles. There are no major, major issues in supplying the components to build the car. So when I put in a request, let's say for 20, 25 of these cars, we are ready, everything's in place to pay for the cars, have customers willing to wait. And the manufacturer comes back to you and says, the factory can only produce five. Okay, and that is the reality of where we are today. Um, I've had a situation where I've had confirmation not specific to the electric vehicle, where I am told today, Sam, the order is accepted. Great, we're going to start producing the cars. And the next morning, I come into the office and I get an email saying to me, the factory has made a determination that worldwide, not Barbados, worldwide, the factory for the particular month has reduced the production to zero. Just like that. And that is part of the reality of what we're dealing with. Part of the challenge, I think, the immediate challenge that we're going to have is that the demand, people, some people are going to get frustrated, but I beg of you to be, keep your head level and understand what is going on. We are ordering cars three months in advance. So we are now in April, April, May, June. I am talking to the manufacturers about getting production for June. And I'm already being told, right, you want production for June, you have potential customers for 40 cars, and you're willing to pay for 40 cars. The plant does not have and will not have the components to produce 40 cars. They will give you 10. In today's COVID-19 update, Barbados recorded 493 new COVID-19 cases, 204 males and 289 females, from the 1,418 tests carried out on Thursday by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases consist of 89 persons under the age of 18 and 404 who were 18 years and older. There were 72 people in isolation facilities, while 2,926 were in home isolation. Two men, ages 88 and 99, died from the viral illness on Thursday. They were both fully vaccinated. As a result, COVID-related deaths stand at 388. The total number of fully vaccinated persons is 151,755. That's 56% of the total population, or 66.4% of the eligible population. There's regional and international news after this short break. 
more oxygen means more energy means more adventure Pure oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Morbi, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley categorically denies charges leveled by the opposition that the government and other intelligence agencies are using software to spy on citizens. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said that clarification on the issue had become necessary in order to correct what he termed misinformation with local and international consequences led by opposition leader Kamla Pasad Bisasa. I'm referring to the recent allegations that have been publicly made by the member for Siparia that the state is using an interception tool known as Pegasus Spyware Solution, Pegasus, to illegally intercept telecommunications and is engaged on widespread spying on citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. I must at the outset, Madam Speaker, state that this is completely untrue. Mrs. Posad Bisasa previously made allegations at a political meeting that the state procured the Pegasus spyware and was conducting secret surveillance on key members of society. Dr. Rowley explained that intelligence agency, the Strategic Services Agency, or SSA, is the sole custodian of all known interception communication software and hardware. The SSA has provided an intercept suite to be used by the TTPS, but the equipment is the sole responsibility of the SSA and remains under the SSA's strict jurisdiction. This is to ensure accountability and control by vetted officers engaged in crime fighting and matters of national security. Dr. Rowley further explained that interceptions are granted for a limited time with the Chief of Defense Staff, the Commissioner of Police and the Director of the SSA, the only persons who can authorize interception of communications. On the international scene, former Honduran President Juan Orlando Hernandez has been extradited to the U.S. to face drug-related charges. He is accused of moving cocaine across the U.S. border for nearly 20 years. He was once a close United States ally, but has now been extradited to face drug trafficking charges in New York City. Juan Orlando Hernandez was being held at a Special Forces military base in Honduras capital, Tehuicigalpa. He was transferred in the middle of a massive security operation to an Air Force airport where he was taken in a U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency plane back to the U.S. He's accused of conspiring to smuggle hundreds of tons of drugs to the United States. Hernandez and his co-conspirators helped push 500,000 kilograms of cocaine into the United States. That's 500 tons of cocaine. Poison that landed in this country on our streets. And as we allege in the indictment, that's exactly what Hernandez wanted. We allege that during a meeting with the co-conspirator, Hernandez declared that he wanted, and I quote, to stuff the drugs right up the noses of the gringos. Hernandez says he's innocent and that justice will prevail. So innocent. I'm innocent. I've been submitted unfairly to trial. I want to share some potent words. Injustices are a threat to justice in every place. You know I worked tirelessly with the purpose of recovering peace in Honduras. I gave all my effort to my country. It is regrettable that those who turn Honduras into one of the most violent countries in the world, those villains, now want to be heroes. When Orlando Hernandez was elected president in 2014, while in office, he was considered partner of the U.S. 
and was lauded for his alleged efforts to fight drug trafficking and illegal migration. His mandate ended earlier this year and was detained 19 days after leaving office. His brother, Tony Hernandez, was sentenced to life in prison in the U.S. on drug trafficking charges. During his brother's trial, prosecutors claimed Mexican drug lord Joaquin Chapo Guzman handed the Hernandez brothers $1 million for the presidential campaign. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.